morning everybody thank you for joining us online I'm really glad you could make it so uh, before we hit things off I just want to give you a little scripture that the Lord laid on my heart and that's from Isaiah uh, chapter 40 verse 28 and it says this do you not know have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth he will not grow weary tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not go faint. And that's the word that the, heart, uh, the Lord laid on my heart uh, this morning for you that you won't grow it and that your hope will be steadfast in the Lord. We're going to have some worship and then we will continue our survey this morning. Again, thank you for joining us and we will come back with some more information later on. God bless. Good morning, church. Hello, family. It's so good to be with you today. Um, although we can't be in the same room, it's uh, good to know that we can still be united in spirit and in truth. Thanks to the Spirit of God and wonderful modern technology. I just want to encourage you at this time to continue to fill your houses with God's praises, to lift up his name, to declare his truth and to spend time in his presence. Now we're going to start with this is the day.
nowhere to be found And friendships slip away There's no one around I remember your word Freely given and shown What do you say? Good morning, Myoma. Uh, today's Mother's Sunday, and we just want to find out what's like, you know, being a mom with young kids. Well, I've been blessed with three children. Um, they are nine, six, and two. And um, being a mother of young children is very challenging. Um, they demand a lot of your time. They require a lot of patience. They you know, they're always needing you basically, and it is very challenging and tiring, but it's the most rewarding thing ever. Um, just to see them grow, develop, the love they give back, um, you can't beat that really, and um, yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. Is there any tips that you would like to give to other mothers that are in the same place like you? The main thing is just getting that support and having that support around you. Don't feel that you have to do it alone, and you're a bad parent if you can't do it alone. Um, you know, get good support from partner, spouse, um, family, friends, and also to talk to other parents as well. Um, a lot of people are going through similar things, have good advice and tips, they've been there before. So it's always comforting and, and good to just seek advice as well, um, especially when there's challenging times with parenting. These kids don't come with instructions, unfortunately, so it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things you have to sort of work out as, as you go along, really. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
Good afternoon and happy Sunday to you all. It is good we have this platform as an opportunity to continue to worship God and celebrate our oneness in Him. During these challenging times, it is important as believers that we should keep our faith, our hope, and our act of worship. An important aspect of our act of worship includes our giving giving of our tithes, of our covenant, of our offerings, our vows, and our pledges. Giving is an expression of the love we have for Jesus. God loves a willing and cheerful giver. Our giving will always result in praise and thanksgiving to God. Some of you already gift through standing order and bank transfer directly to the bank. Thank you and God bless your faithfulness. For others, you can also give through test giving on your phone or by bank transfers. Please keep an eye on the screen for information that will come up in a minute on how you can give by either of this method. Now let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the faithful giving of your people. Please accept it, bless it and use it in a way that will bring praises and thanksgiving to your name. Above all, have mercy on us. Heal our land and the nations of the earth. Uphold each and every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to speak first and then Pastor Tani will speak. I'm looking at the book of Ruth and I want to open by talking about a particular mother in the Bible and she comes from that book. Now, Ruth chapter 1 tells us that there was a particular man from Bethlehem in Judah who with his wife and his two sons went to live in the country of Moab because there was a famine in Judah. That was Elimelech, his wife Naomi, and the two sons were Malon and Kilion. They lived in Moab and then Elimelech, uh, Naomi, Elimelech, who was Naomi's husband, died and she was left with her two sons. These two sons married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. And then after they'd lived there for about 10 years, both Malon and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons <clears throat> and without her husband. Verse 6 and 7 tell us that when Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living, and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. I want us to consider this woman, Naomi. She was devastated first by the loss of her husband and then her two sons. However, we can get an idea of the kind of mother-in-law that she was by the fact that her two daughters-in-law, in verse 10, insisted that they would go back with her to her own people in Judah. As we read on, we see that even in her state of bereavement, she was considering what was best for the two of them, the two daughters-in-law, which is why she was saying to them, no, don't come with me. Life will be so hard. I've got nothing. You stay here. Go back to your parents' homes so that you may have a chance to marry again. Orpah decides to remain in Moab, but Ruth is determined to go with Naomi. As the narrative progresses, we see that Naomi becomes not just a mother-in-law, 
but really a loving mother to Ruth. So when they get back to Judah, she supports Ruth when Ruth goes looking for work and she encourages her on how to keep safe during the harvest when she goes harvesting. She spends time and looks at how to ensure that Ruth's future is provided for. She also shows Ruth the ropes because Ruth is a foreigner in the land of Judah and she tells her how, what to do in this situation, how to respond in another situation, what to expect, how to do things. Through Naomi's instructions and support, through Ruth's obedience and hard work, and through God's overriding provision, Boaz and Ruth are married and they have a son. So, through Ruth, Naomi ends up gaining another family. Mm -hmm. What is also worth noting is that Ruth is a foreigner and she's someone who would have been considered to be outside of God's covenant, not one of God's covenant people. Now, you'd expect a Hebrew mother would want her sons to marry good Hebrew girls, if possible, girls from the same tribe as the mother and her husband. But Naomi was able to look beyond all the constraints of culture and tradition and heritage mm -hmm. and to recognize the worth of this young man, woman that she now invested in. Naomi is an example of a great mother. There are many, many great mothers in the church who are looking after children and not always in the easiest of circumstances. Some of these children may not be your own. They may be adopted or somehow left in your care. I just want to encourage you on this Mother's Day to keep up the good work and to keep on at it. Mm -hmm. And may the Lord bless you as you continue to do so and give you joy and through it provide Amen. you with families Amen. in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Great, great story. The story of Ruth and Naomi. I'm going to pick it up. But actually look at another woman. This time I'll move to the story of Esther, which can be found in the book of Esther. I'll pick up the story. I'll just tell you um, the, the, the background to the story. There's a king, Exaxis, that finds uh, he's the king over a very large area that spans um, all the way to India. And um, uh, part of his vast empire it was a, a small piece of land that the, the Jews were exiled in. Okay, so the people of God found themselves in an exile in Pasha and under this king. Now, the story picks up about this, this man, Mordecai, that would spend all his days sitting at the gate of the king's palace. And then, but something else had happened. For various reasons, the king had got rid of, of the queen. Okay, so he needed another queen. And the, his advisors told him the best way to do it was to look for all the most beautiful ladies in his kingdom, bring them all in, young and beautiful, and then from them eventually would emerge one that would step up to the position of the queen. So Esther comes into the story here. She's beautiful, one of God's people. And so she she's brought into the harem, this place where you would say concubines. Is, that's right, isn't it? Mm. It would be set apart for concubines so that the, the king would call on them whenever he, need, he needed. Mm. And in fact, it wasn't just that easy. Mm. They had to, to prepare, spend about a year preparing each one of them or whatever mm -hmm. in case the king would call on them. Um, and so the story of Esther uh, picks up from there, this young lady. What we find about this young lady is obviously uh, she was an orphan. She lost the mom and dad. Mm -hmm. She'd been brought up by the uncle, Mordecai, this guy that spent all his time sitting at the king's gate. Um, she was beautiful. And, you know, sometimes God would use uh, in things that we might not consider to be exceptional, like beauty, to bring us to a position where he wants to use us. In the case of Ruth, it was her beauty. But that wasn't all that she had. 
she, she found, you'll find in the story that at every step, she found favor with people. Even when she was brought into the harem, then she, the, the guy who was heading the harem just mm. looked at her and just thought, wow, and gave her um, privileges there. And then it came to the time after about a year that she went in to see the king. As soon as the king laid hold on her, the Bible says that his heart went out to her. Again, there was something about her. Not only was she beautiful, she had charm. She was something that appealed, that endeared her to people. But that wasn't all. The story then progresses that um, the people of God, the, the Jews, had an enemy mm. in, the, in, the, in the city called Haman. And he, for various reasons, he had, he had it in for Mordecai. And so he, he was going to take it out on the whole nation. And he um, got the king to pass a decree that all the Jews were to be killed on a particular day. And so Mordecai, um, in the interim, the, Esther, of course, had become queen because as, as soon as she, uh, the, the king took a look at her, he decided that he would bring her to become his queen. So Esther was in this privileged position as the queen. And so Mordecai then sends a message to, to Esther and says, look, you've got to say something to the king. The only problem was anybody that went in to see the king without being called for was what would be subject to death. If the king didn't respond to them positively, then they would be killed. Mm. And so Esther was in this particularly challenging position. Not only were her people going to be killed, she was now in personal danger of being killed if she went in to see the king. But um, the story progresses very quickly and um, so M M Esther then decided what would she do and this is where she comes into her own she was no longer being instructed by the uncle and she called a day a period of three days of fasting and praying this is a young girl that found herself in the position of a queen so she really called the whole nation to no, in fact, it was her people, not the whole nation, but just the Jews. She called her people to fast and pray. And then uh, she then sought God. And here comes the wisdom. Mm -hmm. She sought God on how to endear herself to the king so that the eventually the, edict, the decree that had been um, written would be overturned. But so she progresses through various kings. And so... She draws Haman into the picture in the interim. Um, one of the good deeds that the uncle Mordecai had done to, to the king to, to save his life uh, was, was discovered. Haman, um, then the king, um, raises um, Mordecai and Mordecai replaces Haman again through some of the moves of God through Esther. And, but that was not the, the end of it. Of course, Esther was now free. Mordecai was now in the position that Haman had been in. He had acquired the wealth given to Haman. But that was not the end of the story. It, the people of God were still in danger of being wiped out on the particular day. And so again, Esther goes on to see the king and pleads with the king, intercedes for her people, and, um, and they're, they're reprieved. And God has mercy. And, you know, the king sends out another decree to mm. overturn the previous one. And so the people of God are set free. So instead of the day of death, it became a day of rejoicing for them. When a situation in our nation, and indeed across the nations of the world, where, where, where people are terrified, uh, this, this virus that's, Plaguing mm. over the nations um, is a threat to all of us. Mm. We're being told to stay at home. What can we do? Mm. I suppose this is where we're always, for each one of us, mm. God may have placed us in a particular position, prepared mm. us by virtue of what we have, the gifts he has given us, how he's prepared us to be in a particular position mm. at this time. 
The challenge is to be like Esther, is to first of all commit ourselves to prayer. Esther committed his people, uh, her people, to praying and fasting. We need to spend time mm. seeking God, praying and fasting. Secondly, Esther sought God for wisdom, mm. what to do mm. in her situation. And then she had the bravery to go and do it, mm. even at the danger of her life. And some of us may need to be brave at this time. There are some who are in the medical field who are called upon to look after the sick and the dying. I just want to encourage you, be brave. God will be with you. Trust God, be committed to prayer, mm -hmm. and God will look after you. Mm -hmm. um, also, there may be some of us who are who have neighbors and friends that we need to look out for mm -hmm. at this time. Again, we need to be brave as we go out. Don't let's just jump out and do things. Let's get the wisdom from God, what to do, how to do, when to do. Mm -hmm. Esther was very meticulous in seeking God's direction as she took action. So that's really the uh, encouragement for us today. Um, all of us, all of us, we have there's something that we can all do, and it is to pray together. Uh, in fact, the Church of England, and uh, supported by the Evangelical Alliance, have called for a day of prayer this Sunday, today, Today, so they call the whole nation to spend time in praying and seeking God. Mm -hmm. If my people who are called by my name will mm -hmm. humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God's promise is that he will hear from heaven. Mm -hmm. He'll forgive our sins, our wicked ways, and he will heal our land. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need for God to heal our land. God alone can do it. So right. we need to spend time and to cry out to God. Mm -hmm. So today at 7 p.m., we are being invited to light a candle, get a candle and light it and put it on one of your window sills so that as people drive around, they'll know that there are people of faith who are lifting up the light of the world, the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. If I be lifted up, remember, the, the prophetic word in, in, in uh, the Old Testament, uh, when the people of God were dying and he said the serpent should be lifted up and, and whenever they looked at it, they were saved. In the same way, if the Son of Man be lifted up, that's the covenant we have. Mm -hmm. So let's lift up the name of Jesus uh, on this Sunday so that healing will come to our land. God bless you. And again, we want to say to the church, Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Bye. Hello, everybody. So thank you for watching and I really pray that that word will find root in our hearts. Uh, before we finish today, I would just like us to pray together for uh, the pressing matters at hand. One is the, the coronavirus and also everything that uh, surrounds it. Let's pray. Keep us, O oh God, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and the fearful. And lift up all who are, uh, who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from the love of the Lord in Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's also pray for those in, in isolation. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, and, and in isolation. In, in their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns in you in glory. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Folks, let's continue to pray. Let's continue to bring these matters before the Lord. And I pray that God will sustain each and every one of you. And that you will continue to stay steadfast on his promises. Just a couple of announcements as well before we go. Please keep an eye out on your emails and also on this Facebook group. Right here, we will uh, send all the information, uh, you know, anything that happens that we know that we uh, need to inform you about. We will post the information here, so please keep an eye out. Also, make sure you stay in touch with uh, other body, other people in the body and, you know, to check up on them if you haven't heard or seen any of them, please pick up the phone send the text and it's during this time that we really need to to pull together 
pop chatting in on, on your neighbors see how they are doing you know as christians in this time we really have to to show god and to show his and be his arms and legs to bring hope that is so uh, desperately needed uh, during this time amen so again thank you for joining us and please we will let you know next week uh, uh, what's happening shall we share the grace if there's somebody with you in your home just share the grace with them may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now, now and forevermore amen surely, surely goodness, goodness and mercy shall follow us all, all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen god bless you have a blessed week